are we going to get into today? Well, today we're going to start something I've made before. And, well, let me, what are we going to do? We are going to start our seven root bourbon. I'm going to call it 2.0 because I did adjust the uh, recipe just a little bit. Not much, just a little bit. Um, but first, welcome to Stewart's and Brewing. My name is Randy and this is a channel that's all about home distillation and brewing. Well, one important thing. Hey, hit that subscribe button down there if you please. It just really, really helps this channel out a lot. Alright, let's get started. Right. Like I stated before, I have made this bourbon before. I did adjust the recipes up a little bit. What I, all I did was I added a little bit more of the root vegetables to it just because I wanted to. And I thought that's going to make enhance all the flavors. So what is it? I mean, this is a, a, a bourbon with a very unique taste. Uh, it, it's got like a... You get a sweetness from the bourbon, but then you also have... A little bitterness and a little earthiness taste from all the vegetables and it is fantastic you just you just can't believe it I this is one of my most favorite like I said okay so how do I do this well let me give you the history there was a local distillery they made a seven root whiskey right and um, but they made a whiskey and then they flavored it with some kind of uh, flavoring of the vegetable. It was good, don't get me wrong, it was good. But I was just like, I was thinking, well, you know, the sweetness of a bourbon and the earthiness of the root vegetables is fantastic. And and then, you know, you got your, uh, your turnips will add a little spiciness to it, too. Uh, so what I'm going to do is, um, I'm going to... Let me come back to you with the ingredients, and then you'll know what we're going to use for this bourbon. And then we'll get started, okay? Let's get started with what's the ingredients. Well, the start of the show is, of course, it's a bourbon, it's going to be corn. Right? This is just yellow dead corn. Uh, you know, it's going to bring the bulk of the starch to convert over into sugars into alcohol, just as it does. Um... I believe that corn adds like a, a sweetness to the spirit. And it just seems that way to me. Alright, so that is, we're going to use 14 pounds of yellow dent corn. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to add is, uh, what are we going to add? Three pounds of a malted barley. Okay, the malted barley is going to be mainly the workhorse. Um, it adds, uh, it adds like a nutty, a nutty taste of uh, for the uh, the yeah mild nutty taste. What I think it adds, and plus it has all the enzymes in it we need to help convert over the corn. Plus we are going to use some uh, enzymes to do that. So that's the malted barley. Like I said, uh, what is that? Three pounds of that. Okay, then we're going to use some white wheat. White wheat, I think it adds uh, a little bit of enzymes too. Plus, I feel that it helps smooth out bourbon. That's what I really help. So we'll use one pound of that. All right, so now for the vegetables. That's going to be all our grains. Yeah, that's pretty, pretty standard for a bourbon, for the grains. All right, here's where the difference is. Okay. One thing we will use, we're going to use two pounds of just plain white potatoes. Uh, I feel that they add a, a slight creamy taste to the bourbon. It adds to that. And next would be carrots. Okay. Carrots adds a sweet, earthy, bitter taste. All right. So after carrots, we're going to do uh, beets. All right. Uh, what do beets add? Beets adds, again, that earthy, bitter taste. They're pretty much just like carrots. Just a little bit different. Uh, now, here's one I like is the turnips. 
turnips will add a like a spicy taste. You know, you eat a raw turnip, you get that little bit of spicy taste. All right, and what else we got? We got parsnips. All right, parsnips will add a sweet, spicy taste and a little bit of earthiness to it. That seems like the uh, one of the common things. Everything is that earthy taste. I don't know, is that from the root being a root vegetable? I would think so. All right, let's continue on. We got radishes, right? Uh, we're going to use one pound of radishes. They add a spicy, uh, peppery taste, okay? And what else we got? Oh, and we made bourbon strictly with sweet potatoes. So we're going to use two pounds of sweet potatoes. And they do add a sweet, earthy, uh, fruity, kind of a musky taste. Yeah. So sweet potatoes is, is very good. All right. That's a lot of stuff. Um, so, we're going to have to get started on this. So our first chore is, and I won't bore you that, we'll have to mill our corn. So we'll get that ready. And then we'll mill our grain. And we got to heat up some hot water and, and uh, we'll get going. Alright? And like I said before, if, if you try any, if you like bourbon, you'll like this. Alright, let's get started. Uh, let me get working on this and then I'll be back. With all them flavors of that corn and that uh, barley and wheat and all them vegetables makes a fantastic tasting mash. One of the questions always, our, our first step is I got to mill my corn. Okay. And one of the, I get this question all the time is what this is that I use to mill my corn. Well a friend of mine gave me uh, he's a contractor and they clean out uh, like storefronts and stuff for the next tenant and whatever they get in the store they they just discard it and he had this industrial coffee bean grinder and he wanted to know if I wanted it I said sure and uh, I use it to grind corn it just works fantastic so I just can't stop it's a little bit on the slower side uh, but you know what? It works good. So you, I just put the corn in there and you just tongue here and what I do is I got a false bottom in it. I'm also using a they call it a brew in the bag bag. It's just a nylon bag made for the heat and I put that in there. Sometimes corn can be a little different. I'm trying it a little different way than I normally. I normally use a sieve bucket. I'm going to just try something just a little bit different today. Alright so what do I need to do? Well I need to put me some hot water in here. I got water boiling. Uh, so now I'm going to add some in here and uh, we're going to mix our corn and then we're going to let that corn start to cook. So let me get started. Like I said, I got uh, some water boiling here. Yeah, 
I'll just put three three gallons three gallons or better in here, just so I make sure I mix all that corn in, have enough room. down a little bit. Let me grab my paddle. There for a while it was extremely hot. Like I said, it did calm down a little bit. It's mix that in slow. I moved the camera over here, but you wouldn't be able to see because all the steam. pounds I said I think. It all stirred in. It's like I said it's like a thick porridge. Alright let's double check our temperature and if it's below 190 and we're at 175 okay 175 and it is getting thicker by the by the second. Okay so what we want to do now since it's below 190 I can add in some high temperature Amazon all right, I'll do a couple tablespoons, or teaspoons, I mean. Uh, suggested uses two teaspoons per five gallons. All right, yep, so I'll just use that. We're going to put that in there. And then when I'm done, uh, one thing I probably never show you is the gluco enzyme. I can add that in. I'll usually add it in right before I add the yeast. Okay. And anything else that's left over. It would help with that. Alright, so let's stir that Amazon in. Alright, so what's next? Okay, so what's next is we're going to cover this up and we're going to let us do a thing for an hour and a half. An hour and a half, actually a little bit more than that. Oh, I got a lot of clear liquid up on top. Okay, so I think that those high temperature Amazons really did the job. So, but what I'm going to do now, let me check my temperature. And my temperature is 162. Let me just double check that with a stir. I mean, it's nice and thin. I mean, because you can see, really see the, it was all goopy before, where you could see all the starch in the water. All right, so I stirred it. 162, 163, that will be perfect. By the time I add in my grains, it will drop down to the perfect temperature. All right, so, and like I said before, these grains are twofold. They got the enzymes in it that will help convert any starches over plus uh, flavor. So I get this stirred in. Almost got it. It is getting thicker with all that dry stuff in here. Okay. Let me double check my temperature now. And it is 
153. Perfect. Okay, so what I'm going to do is reset my timer. I'm going to go for an hour and a half. Just because the grains are doing their thing. We'll uh, get our root vegetables ready. And basically, I'm, I'm going to cut the ugly ends off. It's just a matter of chop them up a little bit so they'll fit in the pot. And then uh, we'll put a little bit of water and a little bit of heat on that. And then we'll cook these vegetables till they're till they're soft. So then we'll mash them, and then they'll be put into the uh, into the ferment. Like I said before, I made this a while back. It was fantastic. Uh, everybody seemed to love it. It didn't last very long. Well. Hope it all fits. get some of this seven roots back because she was a very large fan of this. Sometimes I gotta hide stuff from her. Okay. Let me grab a couple more vegetables. Put some uh, radishes in there. All right, let me just cut the junk off of them. Let me, uh, let me finish this up. I'll put some music on or something so you can enjoy that while I finish cutting up the uh, vegetables, okay?
uh, just to let you know, I had to move over to a bigger pot. <laughs> I wasn't. I was just uh, couldn't make that little pot work. So I moved over to a bigger pot, and we got it on the burner there. So it's going to start cooking here in a few, and then uh, we'll be able to move on to the next. Okay, everything's cooked up nice and soft. Now what I want to do is just give everything kind of a good mashing. I mean, I'll be honest with you, it's been about two hours. I had some stuff I had to get done. Oh, it looks beautiful. A lot of liquid. So, what we need to do is sparge this over into our mash tun. Ah, let me back up. We'll sparge this over into our fermentation buckets. Now, with this uh, fermentation, I'm going to collect about eight gallons total between two buckets because once I put the all the vegetables in, there's going to be a lot of sediment. So, so when I finish up, I should have about six gallons to put into my still. Okay, so. With that being said, let me start sparging that over. Alright. I mean, all, it's all nice and thin. I did put a false bottom and a bazooka screen in the bottom of my fermenter, so everything is draining really nice. So what I'll do is I will let this drain out and then I will put some more water in here and then I'll give it a good stir we'll do it again flush these sugars that stuck this drain out. You notice a rope here. I put me a, and I'm gonna try this because I've never done it this way before. I got a pulley system up here. I'm gonna drop it down, hook it onto the uh, these tabs on the my brewing bag, so I can pick it up, and let it drain a little bit easier. Cause it gets awful heavy. But we'll see how it works. Alright, let me put a little bit more water, then I'll give it a stir. Give this a good stir. I'm glad the weather finally starting to break. It was uh, there for a few weeks. It was awful hot. I think the whole United States was extremely hot. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep doing this until I collect about 8 gallons. Do, let's hook this up. Hook this up and then we're going to just pick it up a little bit so it all drain out. And see if it works. I mean, I don't see why it wouldn't. 
just about got my eight gallons. By the time I add in the uh, the uh, the vegetables. Now remember, when you do your vegetables, don't throw the juice away. Just mash it all in, and uh, oh, how easy! Why didn't I do this a long time ago? Jeez, a whiz. Oops, wrong way. Is that half in each bucket? Let's see what our starting gravity is. I did pour the buckets back and forth each other so that we have a consistent um, I am at 1.065. <laughs> I think that's pretty great considering I did use extra sparge water so I can collect 8 gallons. So I'm happy with that. Okay? 1.065. Alright. Let me check the temperature. Okay. Woo. Well, so what's next? And I think I said it already before. I put it in my fermentation room. It's going to cool down to anything below 90. So later on, probably this evening, I will give it a good stir, get a little oxygen in there, and then add my yeast, and it will firm up, you know, 7 to 10 days, somewhere in that neighborhood, and then we'll get ready to uh, distill it out. Uh, this, like I said before, this is fantastic. It just smells so good. It is a fantastic bourbon. Very pleasurable. Uh, so I guess that's what we got next. Okay, so I guess the last thing I got to say is, Hey, thanks for stopping by. We'll see you next time. Here on Still Works and Brewing. Cheers, everybody.